it's been a while since uh, I've had this many people and staring at me and hosting a show. Mm-hmm. Getting a little nervous. Looking at you right in your eyes, man. Excellent. Okay, we are uh, recording. All right. Here we go. VR Chat, the next frontier. These are the experiences from Gunter's universe. His continuing mission, to seek out and connect with VR devs and passionate enthusiasts, to discuss theories, beliefs, and rhetoric of all kind, and to boldly go where no show has ever gone before. Hello everybody, Gunter here, and you're in my universe. Uh, it's great to be back in front of the limelight, hosting a new show uh, here in VR chat. Um, we got a bunch of folks out here tonight. Thanks for everybody that showed up. Got some news to talk about, great stuff to talk about with our, with our guests here. And uh, let's get things started. We have with us four excellent guests. We have Reverend Kyle. Of course, you know him from the Reverend Kyle podcast and uh, post on Road to VR. How you doing, Kyle? What up? Pleasure to be here, sir. And we also have Cam that uh, just strolled right in. How's how you doing there, Cam? Cam might be new, so it's a, a E to to sit. I don't know if you've been here before. And you have to look at the seat, and boom, there you go, man. Next up, we got Kirito. Kirito uh, creates content here in VR chat. How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for letting me come into your show. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. We'll definitely talk about a lot of the stuff you've been creating here uh, a little bit later. And next up, have my good friend Deep Rifter. He's been doing all kinds of social socializing in the social uh, VR scene and sharing you know VR all across the the world it seems uh, how are you doing I'm doing great Gunter it's good to be here uh, where you're always pushing the edge of VR this is great this is where I want to see things go well, thanks man and we also have Tom Tom's another creator here in uh, VR chat we've been enjoying uh, running around your rooms that are just these beautiful pieces of art. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing very well. I'm great to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. So yeah, I'm really stoked here. This is uh, my new show, and we'll basically have guests every week, you know, the best and the brightest, and we will uh, bring you the, the news, and uh, in the future we'll see some uh, videos along the way, and it's just a great party. So I didn't have time to get a lot of news and events uh, out here, but I just wanted to highlight a couple. Uh, on May 18th and 19th, we have the SVVR Expo um, out there in you know, Silicon Valley. Uh, Carl Krantz uh, is the organizer and facilitator of that event. Uh, the tickets are $395. Uh, go ahead and sign up for that, and you will not regret it. It's a great community. And uh, just before the SVVR uh, Expo, there's the uh, Maker Fair that's 16th and 17th. So you can head on out there and do the whole Maker Fair and the Expo back-to-back. And also we've got on uh, on uh, April 19th here the Atlanta VR Meetup. Uh, so I'm going to go hang out there and demo VR chat and, and try to get people uh, on a show. So if you're in the Atlanta area, you should definitely come out and, and hang. All right, so let's talk about some things. I figured it would be great to, to kick things off talking about VR chat and the growth here, the community, the events that have been going on. Um, we've got things like the uh, the VR meetup that happens on Sunday. That's an event that's been going on since last January. So, you know, this is like a year and four months in. So every Sunday, you know, a bunch of us meet up uh, around, what is it, uh, 4 p.m., uh, 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific. It's around that time. Uh, if you haven't been, you should definitely come out. There's great folks there. We have a lot of fun. And uh, this is basically how I met a lot of the people that I'm seeing here, that's how uh, you know a lot of social VR scene got started. Um, and also, uh, we had an event last week where uh, we roasted Reverend Kyle. That was quite the event there. It was, it was pretty <laughs> hilarious. 
Yeah, it was pretty good. Talk about that. What, what did you think there? Uh, what was it like being roasted? You know, I, I really felt a lot of love. Uh, it was it was great. Uh, you know, one of the things that really makes you feel comfortable in a new group of people. Well, I, I say new, but we've been together now for a couple of years. But uh, yeah, I mean, being roasted, it's just uh, it's just a fun way to let people know. It's like, hey, you know, I, I think you're an asshole, and I love you for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, and it was a celebration of your 100th podcast. Congratulations. Yep. That's uh, thank you. Yeah, you know, freaking awesome. Hundred yeah. hundred podcasts. Yeah, it's crazy. Never would have thought I would have gotten that far. Now I'm looking forward to the next hundred. Yeah, actually, talk about that. What was it like a hundred episodes ago? And you know, why did you uh, start your podcast? It, it was originally just me looking for content and not finding what I wanted, which was just a couple geeks talking about VR. And uh, it was still a very, very new community and and still kind of wild west of VR. We're not sure where everything was going to go. And I thought, man, what a great thing would be to just have, you know, conversation to listen to, Uh, you know, because everybody I talked to about it at home or with, with my friends, they had no idea what I was talking about. So setting this up and uh, doing the podcast and, uh, getting people on. It was a great way to network, met all sorts of really fun people. And, uh, man, it, it just it kind of snowballed on me. I had no idea that people were even listening to it. And uh, I had no idea. It was uh, it, it became almost a responsibility. Like, I had to keep doing right. it. And the more I did it, the more I realized how much it was valued. And uh, it was missed. When, when I would miss a week or two, people were like, where is your podcast? And, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's become part of who I am now. It's, it's part of my psyche at this point. Yeah. And it's, it's more than just a couple, you know, folks chatting it up. I mean, you've really gotten some great guests and put out some really great content. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sure you're very proud of that and we all enjoy that. And, uh, it's really inspirational to go from, you know, Hey, yeah, let's just start up a podcast and now seeing a hundred episodes and, uh, you know, it's definitely your motivation for what I'm doing here, and and I've uh, always enjoyed what you're doing, and, and kind of think about how can I do something like that. Yeah, and that's I'm really positive about uh, welcoming new people into this circle because obviously just listening to me talk is you know kind of annoying, especially when well not everybody always agrees with everything I say. So uh, it's good to have other voices as well, and and uh, I've been very supportive of all of the other podcasters we've uh we've actually even teamed up and we've produced uh, vr casters uh vrcasters.com to uh, provide a just a non-stop stream 24 7 of uh virtual reality podcasts um it, it, just in case anybody's been not listening to it recently we had some technical difficulties the uh the server decided to uh uh, play unfriendly, and so we had to do some tweaking. But I can assure you, it's back up and running now. As of about three hours ago, it's fantastic. So uh, feel oh, free to fun. jump on that again. I feel a little bad because I knew it was down. You know, I think a couple of days ago, and I just thought something was. Going, you know, you were working on things, putting something else up, and I didn't let you know. So yeah, I'm it glad was. That it's got yeah, it was down. Uh, what happened was is that uh, right now it's currently where it's being hosted. They reset some of their servers, and as a result, the IP address changed, and so none of the DNSs right. were pointing in the right spot, and I had to go back and retweak, and I thought I had it fixed, but then one of the subdomains still wasn't working, and then as a result, the schedule wasn't working, so yeah, it, little things here and there, and we finally, it's fully up and running and should be smooth sailing from here on out. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we took a little bit of a, a detour from talking about VR chat here. Let's let's go ahead and, and talk to Kirito about it. Um, you've been creating lots of content here, and we've uh, uh, seen a lot of growth in VR chat, and uh, I definitely uh, think you and Tom are, are definitely credit to that. Um, how did you get involved in VR chat? And, you know, just talk about VR chat a little bit. Um, yeah, well, um, I first came into VR chat, and I think the first time I came in here was I ran into Graham and Cindy. And um, I had no idea that Graham was the uh, creator of this pro- uh, great program, so I just took him as another user. And um, I saw Cindy's great room, I think it was Rat Sally, it's still up. Um, 
and I thought, yeah, I've got to do this. Um, and that just inspired me to create my own rooms. And I was a complete beginner in Unity, and I was able to create some really nice rooms with the help of the people of VR Chat and all the uh, friends that we've made here. Yeah, that's it's a big big deal, folks. Uh, we got a great community. It's not just a, a, a you know a, a place to kind of talk and chat like you would in a chat room, uh, you know, here and there. Um, it's it's more than that. It's a place where you can create your own content. Uh, you can be. It's very low barrier to entry to get things going here, um, and you got a lot of people to to learn from. And a year and a half ago, it was it was definitely not not anything like this. It was. It was just a, a place to, to meet up, and that was fantastic to get connected. But now all these people are creating content, and now we're all pretty busy doing all kinds of things. It's really been fabulous. So, Tom, you're in a similar situation. You've been creating a lot of content. Tell us about you know getting involved with VR Chat. I, I know you've been using Unity for for a year or so, so you've been able to now apply a lot of that skills in, in this environment. So, tell us about some of that. Yeah, right. I was uh, using Unity and Real, different engines, and uh, making... Uh, graphic design, con things like that. But uh shot a lot of demos in VR, and I was noticing that it was kind of a solitary experience. So I was looking to see if there's some sort of, like, you know, non-solitary VR experience. And I got found VR Chat and a few other programs, but I jumped into VR Chat. And next thing you know, I'm surrounded by a group of friends who are, you know, lovely, won wonderful. The meetups, you know, great advice, you know, different rooms, and begin to just put some of my work into VR chat and it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, it's it's great to have a place to put your work and people can come experience it and give you instant feedback. You're experiencing it with them. Um, you know, we're all super stoked. Deep Rifter, you're a social VR butterfly and, and you've been hanging out here for a while. Tell me what you think of VR chat and, and, and all this goodness. Well, the developer meetings have definitely become a highlight of my week. I love coming in here on Sundays at 3 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock now, and you just don't know what you're going to expect. Uh, it has become tradition to explore people's worlds, and that is just fantastic to me. Um, I love seeing I mean, it, it's art. It evokes emotion. It evokes introspection. Some of the rooms being created here are just fantastic. I mean, there are times during the week... Like, for example, Heaven's Reflection Room that Kierito has made, uh, just to go and chill out. And it's very effective. The music, the visuals, it's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, um, VR Chat is something else. Yeah, for sure. Um, can you also talk about, like, the uh, your involvement now with Road to VR, the social VR calendar that you're putting together, and even all the uh, cool... VR sharing that you've been doing, I, I believe, on planes and, I don't know, if trains and automobiles. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, I think it's, this is really exciting times. I mean, all of you guys are pioneers. You're all here in the audience. We are on the cusp of something really great, and it's so cool to be in the early days of this. And, uh, you know, I, I majored in, uh, I graduated in psychology, majored in anthropology, and just watching the evolution of these social spaces is absolutely fascinating to me. And uh, so I have been frequenting these spaces for a long time, uh, learning about them, watching the growth, and uh, took a position with Road to VR to track these events, uh, track the evolution of social VR, and uh, be with it every step of the way as it continues to evolve. So yeah, we've also, so cool. yeah, so we're putting together a calendar. We're working on that. In fact, I, I just met with the guys today, and we're putting together a social VR calendar so we can track all of the events in these spaces. Yeah, that's definitely uh, such a needed thing. You know, we, we're all posting to, to Reddit at various times. Uh, people want to know what time everything is. They're not always there to catch, you know, the Reddit post. And uh, it's definitely going to help bring out, you know, people to our spaces, to VR Chat, um, to to Janus VR, to Converge, to Riftmax. These are places that we all hang out in. Um, you know, I loved hanging out in Riftmax. We we did a lot of partying there through the karaoke night. My previous show, Virtually Incorrect, was there. And this is just what it's about for me and, and a lot of you folks here. So let's talk more about VR Chat. What what do we think that the future, or just social VR? What do we think the future of social VR is, is headed and just kind of open it up to everybody. Let's let's have more of a, a chat here. Anybody got any thoughts, ideas on that? 
I, I think I think it's going to end up being, uh, you know, social. Everybody always talks about what's the killer app, what's the killer app, and I, I really don't think that there are, is one specific killer app, but I do think that the social aspect is going to be a killer app for the future of virtual reality, and, and I've said it numerous times, and I'll say it again, I think VR chat is already making large leaps and bounds to be that ruling uh, uh app for social vr but but i say that with a big butt well <laughs> no pun intended uh I, I i say that with a big butt because we don't know what facebook has planned or oculus or valve or whoever it's very possible that something else might be in development that will come onto the scene and blow us all away uh i, I hope not but uh i don't know somebody might be sitting on something Sure, I'm sure there is, um, and uh, social I always thought was going to be the big deal. I even think mobile is going to be a huge deal, I always have, and, and being social with the mobile platform, being able to, well, I'd love to sit here and jump in real quick on like a gear and, and be able to host the show, you know, uh, wouldn't wouldn't have to worry about getting home in time and all that. Uh, but yeah, VR social space, we're able to collapse so much, uh, you know, between us. We don't have to travel to each other, and, and you get to meet so many people. I am suspecting that uh, mobile VR is what's really going to kickstart social VR this year. Um, as we start putting these platforms on the gear where it's just as easy as sliding on a headset, wherever you're at wirelessly, people are going to be diving in here much more often. Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, virtual reality is actually one of the best uh, platforms for people to connect, and usually in you know, in real life or meet space, as some folks will call it. Uh, there's always a, a bit of apprehension, some sort of a risk when you connect to someone. I've noticed that to convey a thought, to convey a dream or anything, uh, you can really connect to people in virtual space because not only can you break those barriers down, uh, distance, but also uh, thoughts. You can actually show people like this, you know, this set or avatar, things like that. That's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah, you certainly, you know, uh, express yourself. It, it's in all this richness here, and, and like you're saying, you know, show people your dreams and stuff. What do you think, Kirito? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely a way to, like, show and express, like, especially in VR chat, express yourself like Tom has in his rooms, and I have uh, to show people what you can do in a social environment and to speak about it in the environment. It's definitely a new way of, like, showing people how you feel and just get your word across, really. It's definitely a whole new social experience, and it's because it's going to unlock so many uh, creators and content for social VR and everything, definitely. What do you think about mobile, uh, you know, social VR? Is that something you'd be interested in? Do you see people picking that up? Um, I can't exactly see myself sitting on a bus or a train using mobile VR at the present moment, um, but, I mean, it definitely, like, um, uh, say the Samsung Gear VR on a plane, if you've got, like, say, a fear of heights, that could definitely um, like help you in that sense. So mobile VR could have many other applications than just like say social. It could help people get past their fears as well. So mobile VR could be used in many other re ways. See, I don't know, man. I I, I think uh, you know I, on a regular basis I'll go somewhere in a public area and there will be people with their phone up to their head having a conversation just out in the middle of public. And it, it doesn't seem to affect people. And then you throw in the whole, like, Bluetooth headset, the people who look like they're either talking to you or they're talking to themselves. I, I think we will see people sitting around with Gear VRs on their head having conversations and not giving having a care in the world about what the people around them think. I think that'll be a thing. I agree with Revan. I see people walking around with their phones and with my vision, I see that they're already prepared for VR. Uh, I go to a, to a break room or a place and there's a crowd of people at a table and no one's talking to each other, all on their phones. It's like the separation is at its most and VR just makes the loop come around and breaks all the degrees of separation. That's kind of how I see it. It's very interesting. 
I think you do need a safe place to be able to use something like the gear. You've got to feel safe. I mean, there's times where I'm even a little reluctant to use my phone just when I feel I need to keep my awareness out, but let alone a headset. That would be one drawback. But there will be places where you will feel safe, like a coffee shop, perhaps. Or, you know, I typically have my gear just sitting right on the coffee table. It's so easy to just pick down, grab it, and I'm logged in with uh, whatever friend chooses to be with me. Sure, bring it over a friend's house. You know, we'll have that ability to connect in a lot of places. I, I see your point about, you know, they probably won't, don't want to walk around the streets with that. Um, but I do imagine that, you know, if we have pass-through or these things, you know, are shrinking down to glass size, you know, in 10 years or whatever it would be, uh, then we'd still be able to see, you know, the real world, augmented world with it all. I could definitely see us walking around and having social VR conversations like we're having now, you know while getting a cup of coffee. All right, cool. Uh, let's move on to uh, some other topics here. Uh, I got on the list Virtuix Omni and the STEM system and all those other, uh, you know, Kickstarter backers, the Control VR, the Prio VR. This has been a big topic lately. You know, have we all just, you know, wasted our money? Are, are these things going to be dead on arrival? Um, what your, your guys' think? Uh, Tom, let's get your perspective first. Well, I do believe that we are going to need to have some sort of motion. I mean, I like the Vive's ability with their light boxes. That seems to be golden, like a holodeck type experience. But, I mean, I would like to have the option to either sit or to get up and, you know, get some exercise in and things like that. The Omni seems okay, uh, the STEM, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of others. What about the rest of you? What, what do you have any of you guys uh, backed in these projects? Uh, are you worried now that, you know, you're, you're really not going to get the support from developers with them and they might not work with anything? I admit, um, I, I've been kind of a wait-and-see person. I haven't really backed. I, I really did like the stems when I tried them out, but uh, the vibe, the ability to walk around, I mean, I look at the Omni, then I look about walking around a 15-foot space, and that 15-foot space is infinitely more attractive to me than walking in place in an Omni or something. No, I want the space. I want my vestibular system, what's going on there, to match what I'm experiencing in VR. That's why people aren't getting sick in it, right? You know? It just matches. It works. It really does transport you. It feels like a holodeck. I, for one, am uh, really kind of confused. Uh, I, I know that <clears throat> I got a lot of guff uh, from, from one of my podcasts where I was trying to debate whether or not the, uh, the, the Vive, the HTC Vive, and the whole idea of the controllers and everything was, was a necessary thing. And um, I, I'm very, very confused at this point because, you know, STEM was supposed to be that answer let's you know give us our hands our controllers inside of our virtual space and then it didn't come out and okay that's fine i, I never believed that the omni was going to be a good solution for me other people might think so that's fine i'm not going to debate that anymore uh, but now you know valve with their you know lighthouse and their controllers and i mean it, it seems like a, a fantastic idea uh, and, and I really, you know, I'm hoping to get one, obviously. Uh, I'd be a fool to not see the value in it. So for those of you who thought I was just being a dumbass on that podcast, I wasn't. I was, you know, I, I think there's a debate here still, though. Um, you know, where are these other controllers going to fit in? And are they going to be just as good? And do we need 15 feet of space to move around in? Um, you know, how many of us are going to end up saying, screw it, just give me my gamepad? Uh a lot of people thought I was being dumb, but I think there's still a conversation to be had about that. I mean, how many of you are actually going to just end up saying, screw it, give me my gamepad? Mm, I don't know about that. I'm going to be seated uh, and standing, for sure. Both. Both. Yeah, I'd want both. Yeah, definitely. I guess there could but. be a lot of uh, adopters that might use the you know, gamepad. We're all the hardcore folks, and I definitely want to put my... Put much as I can in there. But what about the developers? I mean, are the developers going to write for these hardware pieces of hardware? I mean, well, we're like seeing people. Problem. 
Yeah, we're seeing people drop STEM support. We're seeing people drop Omni support. We're seeing people drop support for all of these pieces of hardware. Why? So they can all go and write code that's going to work with the Vive? Then, so what? Do all of these other companies just, they're, they're dead in the water? I mean, I bought a STEM. Uh, I bought Prio VR. What's going to happen too. with those? I would like to um, see like a universal standard system of some sort with, with uh, like gloves. I mean, most uh, fantasy novels they have like a virtual glove of some sort. I would like to see like something like that. Me too, man. I'd love that. <laughs> I just Wouldn't don't that be know. great if, if, yeah. if that just came out and trumped all of it? Yeah, well, that's yeah. the thing, right? What happens yeah. if you know Vive is working on you know Valve's working on the lighthouse and all that? What happens if Google comes out with the glove tomorrow? <laughs> are we all going to jump ship again? I mean, seriously, how many times are we going to do this? I, I it's kind of frustrating to me. Yeah, with STEM, you know, I was hoping to get that sooner than later, or even like now would be great to. It's it's like the first iteration. It's good enough. Let's get it in here. Let's play with it. Let's see how what we do with it in social VR. Let's get the developers really just making controls in your their game. So what if they got to rewrite it later down the the road? I don't know why we need to you know uh, jump ship necessarily. Let's uh, let's see what let's give them to the, you know let's work out the experience part of things. That's a bunch of testing that needs to happen. And I think uh, I don't know. I feel like STEM could have focused more and got these in our hands earlier. At least that's what they should have done. Well, shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know. Yeah. Or what if Vive? Uh, uh, what if like we're assuming they're coming out in the fall? We're we're assuming like everything's dead o right. dead on arrival because the fall is when that's coming and and everything else will basically fall to the ground. But what happens when they're delayed six months or a year because this shit's mm -hmm. hard? We just Input don't hard. know who's going to release the best at the right time. The first person that re re produces a great consumer system, that's where it's going to go. And it is frustrating as developers because right now we don't really know who that's going to be. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating for them. Uh, you know, they're they're, they're, they're putting a lot at stake here in the early game. Yeah, it's a bummer. I was able to get my money back for Omni, though, so I'm pretty stoked about that because now I'm not really interested so much. And uh, I wrote him a little letter saying, hey, I moved into an RV full time and a 4x4 four four space. Well, that's like a bedroom now, so I can't really do that. And they're, like, glad to uh, give me my money back. So that's pretty cool of them as a company. STEM, on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, they have a 30% refund policy. I totally get, though... You know, we back that that stuff knowing that uh, it may, you know, never come to fruition, but it's just frustrating. Any other thoughts on all that, uh, you know, maybe control VR, perception neuron? Um, we have even more of them out there. What the happened to uh, control? Didn't control VR just lose somebody and they took all their patents with them or something like that? Oh, man, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, there was a blurb about it on the uh, subreddit. I didn't know if anybody had any more information about that. I haven't heard. Neither have I. No. That sounds, that sounds terrible. That that wasn't a cheap system. It was actually, you know, kind of the big thing that kind of kept me away from it was, you know, uh, I guess you could get one hand in there, but, you know, fudge that. I want two hands in there, and it was like $600. So those backers are going to, you know, that's going to be rough. Yeah, I didn't back that one. No, I'm glad I didn't. I tried that, and I, uh, actually me and Deep Rifter tried it. We were in the same line there at, what was it, the uh, TechCrunch party? Yeah, yeah TechCrunch. I, I did not like it. I was I was actually bitching a bit much and, and kind of felt bad, but... Uh, you, you were know, frustrated was, because you wanted it to be so much more, <laughs> and it wasn't. Well, it was goofed up, too, right? It was only, like, one hand was working, the other one I looked like, you know, uh, like I'm retarded, and... Uh, just, uh, it, it really wasn't working, the calibration. I mean, that's what happens when you do demos, and we're at a party all getting drunk, and but I wanted to really, that's like one thing I wanted to check out. Come on, it's the glove, let, let's see it. And, you know, it wasn't there then. Yeah, they did say there were some technical glitches going on, so we'll have to give that to them, I guess. We didn't get the full experience. 
All right, so enough of that, but I do want to keep on the, the whole hardware uh, theme. Uh, has anybody scratched their lenses? And uh, I just saw uh, something on the subreddit about how, uh, you know, Oculus, Oculus hasn't really um, addressed people that have problems with their lenses. There is no replacement lenses. Uh, early on, I think if you got scratches uh, on your lenses due to the, the cloth that it came with that was uh, apparently uh, scratching it, you could get some replacements then. But, you know, what what do we do? Are, are the people that uh, don't know how to take care of their lenses so good or, or you know, do de public demos with them, or they're just kind of out of luck? What do you think? Wow, I remember that was huge rumblings months and months ago with the DK2. It was like every other day you'd see a new posting about it. Um, I thought that uh, Cyber Reality acknowledged that there was a problem with the lenses, but I never really heard anything in the way of follow-up. Anybody else? There's just the same chatter now um, with one of the topics that's uh, at the top of the list on the subreddit. You know, it's it's the same bitching, but I was hoping to hear more. Somebody did quote Palmer saying that they're going to address the situation, or um, I think I have what he says here. Uh, um, they're going to make sure that people have access to replacement lenses. I mean, come on. Uh, but I, I get that there's logistics here that, you know, this is a developer kit. There's not a whole bunch of people uh, that have these things. And, you know, are they going to manufacture lens, you know, for more for this, or are they moving on? Do you guys think they should be making lenses for us? And does anybody have scratched lenses? Um, I don't have any scratched lenses, but I did remember reading something, I think it was on Google News, that someone actually made some lenses. Um, I think it was Tom who told me about it. Someone made some lenses for the Rift. Um, and I can't remember if they were better or worse for it. I can't remember. Yeah, it was just amateurs who were basically putting it in their own hands to make their own lenses and get it working because they were afraid of what you said, not getting a replacement. I actually well, use my uh, Rift with my glasses, my uh, actual spectacles on, and I had the lens of the Rift scratch my real glasses. Uh, <laughs> that pissed me off pretty wow. bad. Yeah. So they're gonna well, replace your real glasses, right? No, no, it was no. I was the dumbass. It was my fault. Uh, I I turned out the uh, uh, it's it's extracted all the way out now, so they can't touch. Right. But uh, shame on me. Should have known better. Glass on glass. Who would have thought? Or plastic? Plastic? Are they plastic lenses in the in the DK2? Yeah, I believe they are. Yeah. I think so. Um, I highly recommend the Savvies, the little lenses, the the. Uh, little rubber lenses that you put on on front of them. That's what I use, um, and they've yeah. got some even better ones out now. I've got the old school ones, and they've worked marvelous, marvelously. I mean, I can use my shirt to clean my lenses now. It doesn't matter. They work great. Holy moly, that's that's amazing. What is this product? It's the Savvies. You just apply it right onto the lens. It just lays right on the lens, and uh, it's very clear. It's wonderful. I I don't have any complaints about it. So I found this product uh, that, that somebody made uh, that's a 3D printed um, uh, thing from Shapeways. And so what it is, it can turn your, your B cups uh, into A cups. It, you know, it's just a little uh, shim or wedge, you know, in between them that extends the B cups out to what the A cups are. And so I've ordered that and I'm, I'm waiting for that because my uh, A cups are scratched. I got a, a decent scratch on there. Through my whole moving into this RV thing, I didn't take care of things as, as, as good as I you know, should have, and really, I don't take care of everything in my life as probably as good as I should have, but I will report back about this product to see if it uh, works. Cool, cool. So, I got some other things to, to bring up, but, you know, what, what have you guys been uh, reading up on or seeing in the subreddit or thinking about in VR? Let's throw out some, uh, you know, topics from you guys. Any cool games and demos? Well, we did talk a little bit earlier about the Red Frame demo. I just want to bring that up again. It's a great demo, I think, to get a bit of a taste of presence. Uh, if you set your camera up just right where you're maximizing 
the camera space as much as possible with your DK2. You can walk around a little bit, walk around the furniture, lean into the lamps, get down, you know, look at the bottom of the couch. Um, and if you really want to ramp it up even a little bit more, grab a chair, grab a couch, grab something that can mimic that space in the virtual world and have it in the same spot and walk around. It's pretty awesome. Mm. It really does mess with the head a bit. <laughs> Fantastic. You're always pushing the limits of, you know, uh, how to experiment. I know that uh, you, you use your gear and I think look up at the ceiling, right? You lay, lay on your back and, and use that. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing with the gear that I was playing around with two weeks ago is I finally did the photosphere. You know, there's the Google camera. It tells you exactly where to aim your note for, take the shots, bunch of shots all the way around, and then it stitches them together. And you can get pretty good at this uh, to where it looked pretty damn good. So what was I found strange was being able to take a shot, for example, of my office upstairs and then go downstairs, put it on, and, you know, you remember spaces hmm. different ways. There's visual memory. There's auditory memory. You know the way a space in your house should sound. So when you're in another spot in your house and going virtually into another room of your house, the audio cues are really intense because it, it, it just – really confuses the brain, I found. Something to try out, something to experiment with. It's a unique experience. That is super rad. Rev, you got a gear? You should definitely try that. I totally should, yeah. Have your kids try it, too. Yeah, my kids, oh, man. I swear, every time I look. You know, my, my problem with my gear is that it's my primary phone, which I shouldn't have done. Right. Shame on me. Uh, so anytime I need to use the gear or somebody else wants to use the gear, they're like, let me have your phone, let me have your phone. And I really shouldn't have done that. That was unfortunate. Oh, well, maybe next time. Yeah, all that Snapchat stuff just popping up. Not good. Yeah, that and Tinder. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what other demos? Uh, I saw um, a while back Alien Isolation uh, came out and uh, saw some kids, uh, teens, trying it on, on some video that was on the subreddit. Uh, it looks pretty good and looks uh, like something I want to pick up. Have any of you guys tried that? I tried it, yeah. It was actually pretty intense. It's one of those moments where you, know, you play a 2D game and you're like, I'm going to play this, I'm going to look at this. And you play it in 3D, you're like, I'm here, I'm actually going to experience this. Why did I choose to experience this? It was very, very good. Right on. Anybody else? Um, people talk about it. Yeah, there's this one demo that I tried. Um, it's done by a, I think it's a 16 year old. It's a sort of online demo. It's quite well done. Um, it's quite interesting. I don't know if any of you guys have tried it. Well, no, what one is it? No. Sort of online. Oh, I have not tried that one. Nope. What do you like it's, about it? Um, well, it's the fact that it takes you into um, a, like an anime, and um, it's really interesting the way it's done, especially the menu system at the beginning. Um, and it's, for me, um, kind of a bit of a dream and very, very immersive. Um, it just takes you into it, and it really feels like you're in the forest. Uh, well, for me, it does anyway, at least. That's pretty rad. And if you guys don't know, his avatar is actually from the anime uh, Sword Art Online. He's the main character. Mm -hmm. I I think uh, my favorite demo right now is on the gear. It's Chris Mill Evolution of Verse. It's fantastic. I'm betting Kyle's probably seen it. Um, it's amazing. It, it's one of the best produced uh, VR experience, I think, um, and it's just blowing people's minds that I show it to. And it's basically, you know, you start out, you're on a, a in the middle, standing in the middle of the lake, somewhere at the base of what appears to be the Tetons. A sunrise is breaking over the mountains, lighting up the clouds. The clouds are moving overhead. Dragonflies are coming around your head. You're looking down at the surface of the water, and then you suddenly notice this train that begins approaching on the side of the lake. You're following it, 
and it's getting louder, and all of a sudden you realize it's left the tracks, and it's coming across the lake right at you, and it gets closer, and it gets louder, and the music builds. And at that point, people are putting up their arms, they're ducking down, they're bracing for the impact, and as soon as this train hits you, it explodes into this huge flock of birds and the music just carries you away and these birds are doing the patterns, the flocking patterns above you and the next thing you know the birds are turning into streamers that rain down upon you and you begin to become elevated and you rise into the sky amongst these streamers and into a tunnel. I don't want to give the rest away. The ending is unbelievable. And I'm using this demo like when I'm on the train I will put the, I'll find my target person, I'll say, because they, they've already watched me playing with it, people are whispering in the background, so I pick someone out, and I said, it's your turn, let's put you in, and they're like, all right, and when you see that sense of awe come over their face, everybody on that train car is riveted to that person, and inevitably it turns into a VR party, people are asking questions, why are they grabbing at the sky, why are they reacting this way, and it gives us an opportunity to uh, explain what VR is, and I think the, most of the questions are, how much does it cost, and when can I have one? People want this, they're very excited by it. I love hearing that, that's fantastic. Uh, Rev, you sh uh, what do you do with your VR or your gear? Do you uh, share with people and had cool experiences like that? No, I hoard it and keep it all to myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, I... I uh, because of your Tinder and uh, your Snapchat. Right. <laughs> yeah, I uh, find myself bringing it with me everywhere I go now. Uh, so I bring it to work every day with me uh, when I decide to go. And uh, I bring it with me to family events. Uh, when I visit people in prison, you know, I, I just, I bring it with me everywhere all the time. Yeah, it really makes me, uh, you know, want to grab one, uh, but it's just kind of, you know, holding out for the Note 5. That's, that's definitely what to do. Um, but man, I keep, you know, I'm going to go to the Atlanta VR meetup. I, I'd like to bring that there and, and not just my whole rig and everything, but, uh, yeah, it sounds great. I can't wait to experience, you know, Deep Rift. You talked a lot about things there, and it uh, sounds pretty fantastic. And uh, speaking I, of meetups, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I find people so much less intimidated by the gear, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. No, the barrier to entry is, you know, so much less. You're, you don't have to cable up. So meetups, you know, I'm going to go to the Atlanta... VR meetup. We meet up here in VR chat. Uh, what do any of you guys go to any uh, you know meetups in your local area? Yep, Salt Lake Valley Virtual Reality. Absolutely. What's the turnout you got going on there? Uh, we typically have about ten or so people that actively turn out uh, every month. Sometimes we'll get lucky and get some more. We have about close to forty on the roster. Uh, but, you know, people come and go. But we're doing some really cool stuff. I mean, we're doing the camera equipment. We're making, you know, doing the la the, the, the 3D printing. Uh, we're doing the scanning. Uh, we're really playing around and having a great time. We have a lot of the, a lot of people from the maker community that are contributing to some of these projects. Uh, we work with a, a group called Edge of Discovery, amazing group of people that have embraced VR, and they do documentaries. So they're going to be using this equipment to do some filming and, uh, yeah, it's really cool to watch people contributing in different, unique ways to the VR community. Yeah, it's very exciting. The Atlanta VR meet will, will be the, the first meetup besides uh, out there in, in Silicon Valley where, when I traveled out there for Connect, you know, and got to attend that. But, you know, something that I can attend regularly or hop in my RV and hopefully uh, attending others like the Nashville meetup. Uh, Tom, have you, uh, do you have any meetups in your local area? Where are you at? I'm in Pennsylvania, uh, United States. Uh, I think there was one out in Philadelphia. Uh, there was only about 20 people there, though. But people are definitely asking me all the time to put something together, even with my Rift, and make a, a VR meetup. But yeah, it was it was a small thing, but it was really nice. People really are interested in VR and willing to go all the way with it. Yeah, man, mobilize them. Get them uh, get them hooked on your uh, VR rooms. Um, definitely bring him into VR chat. Kirto, you're in uh, London or somewhere in the UK, is that right? 
Yeah, definitely London, yeah. Um, there's not really any meetups that I know of um, as a rule, um, but there is like type of little like events here and there uh, spread across London. There's one official one in uh, one of the biggest malls we've got now. Um, and they're showing it off as a fashion thing um, and like free d little demos uh, for fashion and I think they did a competition where someone could view a, uh, a fashion walk type thing uh, in Paris um, but apart from that not many no um, I don't think the Rift is very well known in the UK unfortunately uh, well not to my knowledge anyway <laughs> Yeah, our friend, you know, Wormslayer, the moderator of uh, our subreddit, he's also uh, in your neck of the woods, and, and I don't think he's uh, found any uh, good meetups out there. You should uh, you should snag him up and take him to one of those other ones and, you know, that you were talking about that are outside London. He needs a... Uh, he probably needs a... Yeah, surprises, definitely. That surprises me a little bit, because I've always kind of viewed the BBC as being really pro-VR, and I've heard some great... Uh, uh, talks uh, from the BBC, uh, great programs from the BBC on VR. Oh yeah, the BBC has always mentioned in stuff like this, um, but whether it hits on like the BBC News or anything officially, like on live TV, is another story. Uh, it might be a little uh, like clip note on the BBC website or something like that, but I don't think VR has hit mainstream yet in the UK as a major rule. Uh, I want to go into like the fashion thing, but you mentioning BBC and, and VR, uh, I watched this uh, series called Black Mirror. I watched like four out of the six episodes on Netflix. Anybody heard of that? No. No. Well, you got to check it out. It's uh, it's all about like uh, you know tech being you know being used or in the future uh, it growing to this weird place, right? Like you're you're staring into the mirror uh, of yourself in, in this sort of new. It's like a a twilight zone. Each episode is its own thing. So it's you know, these different reflections of what tech could evolve to. And uh, they've got uh, ones where, you know, you're recording your life, which is something that uh, I think is very interesting. Uh, you know, recording right now uh, my avatar. And so what you see, you could uh, see what I see and you could get in the rift and sort of experience it, which I've had people do uh, from previous streams of mine. Um, but yeah, they, they could go back and rewatch. They could actually throw it up on a on a on a screen. You could be like, no, you said this, or no, I saw the way you were looking at him. You know, the relationship troubles and how it spirals, how they get addicted to rewatching their life, and it, it's really this. It, it, they don't really end well. The, the series it really goes into the dark parts of this. So um, check it out. It's really awesome. Wow. You just brought to mind another great use for, for uh, therapeutic uses of the, of the riff, being able to record a family session, for example, and then have the individual, individuals go back and watch oh, themselves man. and watch their interactions with their family members and, and have the counselor, you know, basically narrating and, and helping them process uh, those dynamics. That would be way cool. Blowing my mind. That's, uh, that's, that's real right there. That, uh... I know you're, uh, you know, involved in, in, in this sort of uh, side of things, and, and can you talk more about other uh, ways VR can impact uh, therapy? Well, you know, we've already all heard about, you know, how it can be used for phobias, PTSD, etc. But I'm really sensing there's a lot of other things we can do with virtual reality. Uh, for example, even using spaces like what Tom and Kirito are creating, these, these spaces uh, that will allow us to shift our consciousness, that, that will help provide introspection, that will bring a, a sense of peace. You know, I, I think of anxiety disorders, depression, uh, these sorts of things. I mean, uh, I'm becoming more, I think, I really believe there's going to be a branch of psychotherapy that's using VR specifically, you know, in ways that we haven't even thought about yet. But like we just mentioned, you know, filming a, a family interaction in VR space and and looking at it from all different angles, that, that in itself is something. Yeah. So we'll see. It's great. I love hearing about that. Take, take Jungian psychology to a whole new level in VR, you know. Indeed. Yeah, I, I need some of that, um, you know, some of this profound uh, spiritual sort of uh, experiences. Tom, you've been bringing us there with your... Uh, quite uh, moving, you know, these art pieces, these, uh, um, uh, basically what's inside your head, what you envision, you know, heaven to be like, hell to be like, or 
I saw in your your digital um, experience having the tree of life in there and, and so much more. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. How how were you inspired, or what were you thinking? Did you think you were going to create this kind of thing when you started toying around with you know VR chat? Uh, I kind of did. Yeah, I was. I mean, when I think about virtual reality, I think that it's a place that we can make anything happen, not just things that, you know, things that we thought, oh, someday I'll see this, you know, and it's like, how can we can see it now? Or if I had a dream or if I had a vision of something, people say they have spiritual experiences, I've had some, and I try to explain it to you using words, you know, and we have different mediums like movies, but now we have a new medium, virtual reality, where we can, you know, come together and have the same experience and people draw upon it what they, you know, get from it themselves. It's almost like a shared dream. And that conveys a, a far more impactful thing. We read books and we imagine in our minds what it should be, but in this place we don't really need to imagine. We can we can be there. And I think that's uh, a really moving experience. It's first hand experience. They say you can't really know something until you experience it yourself. And in here you can actually do that. And that's the power of VR, right? It's experiential. That's where it's different from the other mediums. That is the magic. Right. Yeah, it feels like we're at a some sort of a talk show in the future here, uh, talking all about VR. I think sometimes it feels like a dream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what else? Oh yeah, fashion. Let's. Uh, so the Atlanta VR meetup, uh, they had uh, uh, an event, a fashion event. Rev, you had them on your podcast. Uh, I f- actually forget uh, her name. Uh, Annie Probably. Eaton, yeah. Annie, yeah. So um, it was pretty interesting. They uh, they brought uh, VR to the the fashion show. Nobody was, I'm sure, expecting it there, and they uh, got to you know bring some models and have them try VR for the first time in, in an old virtual uh, runway. Um, do you know a little more details about the actual, uh, you know? Um, any of the reactions or, or how the event went? Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, it was really cool. Um, you know, they they told us all about uh, on the podcast about how uh, you know they've been working on this rig uh, to take some like 3D video and throw it in, and uh, taking it to an actual uh, fashion show and kind of catching them all off guard because you know you go to a fashion show, you expect to go and stare at a bunch of people walking up and down a plank and never jumping off, which you know makes Fashion show is a little boring in my opinion, but anyway, uh, yeah, they they um, they had a really good success. They had a lot of people jump in and couldn't believe uh, what they were looking at. And they're like, oh wow, it's the future, and and that that's kind of the expectation nowadays. I mean, it used to be really. You lost your rep. Yeah. Uh oh. Did, did you lose me? me? You're good. You're good. Now. Okay. There Oh, we might have okay. lost, uh, I don't know, Graham and uh, Wow back there. Uh, we should uh, draw some attention here. They are, they are like, uh, dancing their butt off on the... Uh, do you guys see them all jumping around? <laughs> yes, yes. They drink m- way too much caffeine. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 He's living up to his name. Yeah. Uh, no, there, it's, uh, you know, people are surprised. The mainstream people, people who are not into VR, they're surprised when they see this stuff. And uh, that's yeah. cool. You know, it's really cool. Uh, but, yeah, Annie and, and Peter, uh, you know, with the Atlanta VR group, and they're doing their meetup and the fashion stuff, It's uh, they have a really cool story. And uh, so if you haven't heard that podcast, go check it out. It was uh, episode 97, I think. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting them. And- and Mr. Black Wolf that I believe will be uh, there. Ah, yes, Bobby will be there. He's going to record, he's going to stream his uh, podcast right. live. Yeah. I, I've actually considered coming down uh, that, that, that Sunday. Uh, it's a, oh, it's a six, six and a half hour drive. I don't know if I want to do it or not. Yeah, that's I'm a thinking bit rough. about it. I guess it, it, it's done at like 10, uh, 10 p.m. and then you have to drive back that night or would you stay? Oh, no, I'd stay. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd definitely yeah. stay. That'd be great. Love to hang out with you again. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I don't know. April 19th is a pretty rough day for me. So, uh, it's, uh, well, it's my birthday. So, kind of kind of weird okay. to not be home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, 
cool. Um, yeah, so we're going to be winding things down here. But uh, why don't we toss the uh, toss things into sort of the, the, the far out things, what you guys you know, see in the future of what we will um, uh, be able to do with VR in, I don't know, 50 years, 100 years. Are we jacking into the Matrix kind of thing? Yeah. Are we living other people's lives? You know, uh, you know, like the Black Mirror that they basically speculate on a lot of these sort of things. Again, with recording life, being able to look back and and find out, you know, your your wife was cheating on you or weird stuff like that. Um, or the future of pornography. You know, what are we going to be able to do? Can't wait for that. Throw out some stuff, some thoughts. Well, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Well, uh, I'm kind of far out there when it comes to certain things, and I <laughs> used to listen to a guy, uh, his name is Thomas Campbell, I don't know if you've heard of him, he talks about how we already kind of live in a virtual realm, and how uh, you look at our, our some physics, there's even like digital physics that's out now, where you look at the virtual aspects of how everything works here, 3D objects, things like that, physics, it's the same as our re regular world, our real world. We were born, we don't know where we come from, we live, we go to sleep, it's like logging out, and you die, you know, I'm not really sure where you go after hmm. that. And, and and it's like a society kind of evolves, almost like playing a game, and then they begin to get to a point where they develop VR. And when they develop their own world, they begin to wake up to the fact that they are already in a virtual realm. And then, of course, the next logical question is, well, who built the one we're in? Sure, I, I, I love listening to uh, uh, one of those big wow. thinkers. Um, one of those, uh, you know, uh, guys that's been uh, uh, studying this sort of thing and, and history and language, uh, Terrence McKenna, he's a bit of an inspiration right. for me. Yeah. yeah, we talked about him a bit, Tom. Uh, you know, he, he, he talks about how uh, language uh, basically is sort of the, the first virtual reality that, um, you know, if you think about code and, and, and how we write, programs and, and those things are, you know, are make up our virtual world. Well, you know, our operating system in the human body is running, you know, uh, humanity 1.0 and it runs on the, uh, you know, our brain system and it, it communicates with uh, language. That's how we uh, all started, uh, I guess, forming this sort of virtual reality of, of cult cultural, you know, ideas, sharing that stuff. And now in our world, you know, we're, we go through institutions that, like, you know, elementary, middle, high school that are basically training us this and putting us through this uh, um, uh, sort of virtual reality. Um, you know, you can't really unknow these things. You are thrust in them. Um, you can't really undo it all. So, uh, yeah, I'm always fascinated by how language um, uh, works like that. It is kind of the first virtual reality and how uh, it, it's this sort of medium like VR that I feel like we can start to unravel this. Like we now that we get to step into virtual reality, we can maybe learn a lot about the sort of virtual uh, existence that we sort of live. This existence that's all in our mind, really. I agree. What do you guys think about be, that far up stuff? It's, it's going to be interesting just to see how much of it becomes augmented reality versus versus virtual reality. It's going to be bringing it things into our physical space and us going into virtual worlds back and forth. It's going to be a long continuum of different ways in which we're altering our reality. Um, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I know that uh, you know education is going to be transformed. The way we socially interact. It's going. I mean, look around this room right now. We have people here present, present with each other, not just looking through screens, but experiencing each other from all over the world. This is amazing to me. Uh, it's communication in a new way. It's an, it, it provides it's a tool for empathy, uh, a tool for collaboration, yeah, huge. for education. It's amazing. I agree. Uh, I also noticed that uh, our society, I believe, will eventually become a fourth dimensional society. In other words, we're not bound by time and space anymore. Here we are, like he said, sitting around. We're from all over the world. You know, uh, we were talking about having like a virtual standard time so we can all meet up at the same time, even though we live all over different yeah. parts of the planet. I help what I'm doing here. Right, and then also space, where you know, if 
these worlds get good enough, big enough, you know, you can kind of experience the same things you experience in the real world, except without, well, with instantaneous travel, basically. Yeah, and traveling be, inside our own minds. It's going to also be interesting to see how business done in the virtual world will have real impact in the real world. And those that can access virtual reality early on over the next decade are going to have a bit of an edge economically over those that aren't accessing this world and conducting business in this world. There's a lot to be said there as well. I concur with that statement. Are you are you planning on you're you're sort of conducting your business, you know your uh, your brand and. Um, are you planning on doing any more business ventures or, you know, what do you... I, I plan on just, I'm going to stop bathing. I'm just going <laughs> to sit in my room, my VR room, uh, pl plenty of ventilation, and I'm just going to cut myself off from the rest of the world and do everything in VR and for jerk the rest it. of my life. Oh. And jerk it, yes. Like While that dude up there. The, Look at this you're... guy up here, jiggling <laughs> around like a... Firefox, like, you're... Uh... Oh, like you're having a good time. Masturbator with Tourette's. So look at him. <laughs> you just got to get out of your seat with E and, and uh, uh, sit back down. Yeah, that kind of threw me off uh, off topic there. Um, oh, I was going to say, yeah, and, and wearing your VR diaper. We need a Kickstarter. No, I'm just going to go commando and put some newspaper on the floor. I think you need a real diaper for that. Yeah, I, I like a, maybe maybe uh maybe just like a bird cage type of thing where it's like a like a like a like a fence type of material and everything just drops <laughs> below it and water yeah, constantly like flows through it, you know. You know, I was actually kind of thinking that it'd be nice to have a, a kind of a VR space. I think that'll kind of catch on. I don't I don't want to say the word pod because it sounds like the Matrix, but. Something that's comfortable where you just come home and you kind of lay down in a comfortable place to put your, you know, physical body and you can comfortably go get around in VR if you don't want to walk and run, things like that. Yeah, I think over the course of the next, uh, yeah, 10 years, a lot of the conversations we're having right now will seem pointless to the future because, uh, what are you talking about? You just get in the VR cone of dome of silence and just get in and jack in and stick your hands here and your legs here and everything's perfectly integrated silly boys talking about stupid vr stuff back in 2015 you didn't know what was going on that's what it's going to look like in 10 years yeah. we're all going to look like a bunch of fools <laughs> if the the people of the future could look at us and how we jerk off now they'd be you know think things like you have to use your hands yeah right how primitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, anything else uh, to throw out or talk about before we start wrapping things up? Well, uh, I just have a suggestion maybe at the end of the show uh, for those that want to stick around. I, I think we should take a look at Tom's new room uh, with the uh, Tree of Life. It is fantastic. Yeah, that was something I definitely want to to bring to the show is um, of course after the show let's go party down in all the cool rooms but even on the show to, to highlight some to mention them uh, people viewing this you know get get to know what's going on out there what's the cool stuff to go try out Kirito you make a, a lot of rooms a lot of rooms um, <laughs> what are your favorites what, you know there's there's uh, uh, shoot I already forgot the uh, the one I really like that you know the one I really like um Heaven's reflection. Heaven's reflection. Exactly. Um, that one's just beautiful and, and, and uh, was in awe when I when I went through there. But there's also your example room is really cool. Your sample room, the you know, it's not flashy and shiny. It's functional. Can you talk about those? Um, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely uh, working on it um, tonight. Um, I'm putting a lot of work into it. I'm trying. Well, me, Tom, um, and a few other people, including Aaron and a few others, have got together, and we're trying to. Uh, well, I'm trying. To, my idea was to try and create an example room of all our kind of ideas in one, 
and try and make it a useful asset to like like show people what can be done um, in VR chat and to show them the possibilities are endless. Um, and I'm actually currently starting on uh, like making animation in there, like a full on ride um, and stuff like that. So it's definitely coming along, um, but I should have it all done by the next meetup, hopefully, or at least some of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's such a great thing that you're doing there because you're, you're showing off, you know, basically the features that drop um, in VR chat via the SDK, and now you, we can go, oh wow, you can do that, or um, it, it's just such a, a great, you know, almost tutorial, or at least you start going, oh, I want to do that, and then you can go learn from us here in the community, um, and uh, Graham, uh, one of the developers here in VR chat, is putting together tutorials. So these are the sort of things that this community needs, so I certainly really appreciate it, and uh, it's always great to, to be in your room. You, oh, you also did the uh, Easter hunt last Sunday, that, uh, or this, yeah, this last Sunday in Easter that I missed. Uh, um, I got to see it after the fact, um, but uh, tell us how that w event went. Um, well, unfortunately, there wasn't many people on the um, event because of due to the fact that it was Easter. Quite a few, yeah. a lot of people were busy in that. So what I'm going to do is leave up all the rooms that I've done uh, uh, the prior week and to this week meet up so they can explore it, see what they missed. Because, um, well, I did about 70 Easter eggs, and I can tell you now it was no fun placing every single one, so it's staying up and letting everybody stay, uh, giving them a chance to see it. So there's there's eggs around, but you mean there's like hidden ones that you, the ones that you can interact with? Um, right, there's one hidden Easter egg um, in that entire environment, and it's got a teleporter inside it, and it teleports you to Easterland. So your goal is to go through and count all the eggs to to you find all seventy? Um, no, just to find the one that you can interact with. I see. Yeah, you you were able to kind of show me it all, so I, I didn't get to. To do the actual hunting thing, which um, I don't, I don't. At that moment, I wanted just to get in and check it out, because unfortunately, I had to spend a lot of time with the family and, and exhausted in meat space. But I really enjoyed, you know, hearing that there that you put on this event. And um, you were talking about doing more events that are centered around holidays or or things like that. We saw some fo cool fireworks going on. Yeah, um, I think the Rifter really loved the fireworks. Yeah, um, fireworks are great. Yeah, um, but I think what I'll do is I'll um, re-upload the Easter egg event and maybe add some fireworks in it and move the egg to another location so it gives people another chance mm. to re-find it. I like it. Cool, man. We'll keep up the great work and we'll we'll definitely check in with you, you know, as things go and, and uh, highlight more of your work here on the show. Definitely. We'll do and thanks for being on the show. Do you have any other thing that you want to uh, promote? Do you have a Twitter account or anything like that you'd like to shout out? Um, no, just the fact that, um, like I said, uh, Tom, Aaron, and me and all that are getting together, working together, and hopefully what we want to do is like create, um, like put all our work together and make a the best room we can, like all together. So hopefully that will happen, and we'll put all our minds together, and hopefully come up with a really exceptional room. Right. Right on. I love hearing about this collaboration. And Tom, we've talked a little bit about your rooms. You've got uh, Heaven and Hell, which are huge, you know, experiences where you're you're going from many different levels. Hell, uh, maybe think of like Dante's Inferno, kept descending further and further into hell, and just uh, uh, quite an experience. And also the what, digital what? Digital life. Digital life, yeah. yeah. Um, that one's rad. You start off in uh, what would be your bedroom or your house, and uh, then it sort of reminds me of Ready Player One. A lot of digital sort of information, uh, um, you know, Matrix themed and uh, just futuristic looking and then you go uh, down the uh, ramp into all kinds of uh, digital goodness a badass digital tree of life that's gigantic and then there's all kinds of things around that. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, I wanted to uh, to make, I made heaven first because in my mind I was thinking what's the one thing we all want and that we think we can't have 
and uh, you know, anytime soon. So I decided, you know, why not make like a heaven realm? Wow. And, uh, and then I decided, well, people were saying, okay, that's great. You know, you should make hell. <laughs> so I found it interesting that people were asking for hell. So I decided to go ahead right. and give my interpretation of what I believe a, a place without love would be, which I consider hell. Uh, and then, of course, something in between, a life where, you know, a room, and yet at the same time, we're in a virtual space. Uh, it's kind of a digital, digitized room, and of course, what's the ultimate symbol of life, uh, like the tree of life you've heard about, things like that. Right, right. No, I, now I remember you explaining it more, like it was uh, the place between them, the, the limbo where, you know, the real life is meeting, um, you know, going into limbo before it goes to, well, either heaven or hell, I believe. Exactly. Anything else to, to promote, a uh, Twitter account or, you know? Uh, yeah, anything? you can uh, reach me at uh, on Tom23VR. Uh, that's my Twitter account. Uh, pretty much everything I have is on there. Uh, of course, here at VR Chat. And uh, as Kirito was saying, we're working together to see if we can make amazing experiences. Uh, we definitely, you know, work well and we learn from each other. And a lot of things that I would never think about, you know, Kirito what comes up with and a lot of things that he would need I come up with so it's been working out and of course everyone else here too uh, very inspirational very very inspirational yeah definitely yeah we've talked too about collaborating so I was super stoked to meet you and have I don't know a multi-hour conversation the other night and how we have a lot of the similar ideas and and, um, and visions yeah that was amazing uh, yeah the, the thoughts that could happen like I said there's just really no limitation with VR I think that's something we have to all remind ourselves all the time is that, you know, in the real world, you know, there's certain things you can't do. You, I can't just, you know, build a 20-story building tomorrow in the real world. But here I can. You know, right. there's really no limit to it. Yeah, that, that was sort of the thing I wanted with my uh, my new show here was, you know, the old show, Virtually Incorrect, was, was rad. And, and at the time it was like, you know, I wanted to feel like, you know, what I wanted in real life, which is, you know, uh, a politically incorrect sort of style uh, looking show so it's the traditional you know uh, uh, table with chairs around it on a stage sort of situation but uh, coming over to VR chat I could think up anything I wanted and uh, you know inspired from Tron and Ghost in the Shell and those are things that I love and so here we are around a set that's like that and uh, I'm really stoked to, to now bring the future be at a future set and you know as I said we're going to keep upgrading and you know, the better lighting and shaders, and it's it's gonna it's gonna evolve a lot, and I'm really stoked about that. And appreciate the team that has helped me. Yeah, and I really enjoy this show. Uh, I think that you all have to also remember we're we're the future. Like this is like a lot of things people are imagining. We're doing right now, you know, and it's just amazing to be here. I think and I thank you for that. Thank you, man. Glad you all could come out, Deep Rifter. Tell us where we can follow you, what websites we should be looking at, guide us. Uh, yeah, Road to VR, we'll have the calendar out here real soon. Uh, we want to be a go-to place to just catch up on all things social VR. Um, I can be followed on Twitter at uh, deep underscore rifter. And uh, yeah, I'm just here to promote social VR in general. Um, like Tom said, this is pioneering time. It's all big experimentation. There's so much to do. And I think... It's also our responsibility to help people to feel comfortable coming into these spaces. I think there's an intimidation level. People are scared to come in and actually socially interact with somebody in such a, a space that's already overwhelming. Just coming to VR in itself is overwhelming. And what they will find in all the social platforms that I've experienced is very welcoming developers. And we just need to let people know that, that we expect them to be newbies, and we're here to help and guide and welcome them into the future. Absolutely, come one, come all. And Reverend, we don't even we don't even need to bother with where your podcast nope. is or nope, any of that. No, but no. VR casters is definitely something to to talk about. And what about when you're out there at the SVVR Expo? You have any plans to to bring us all the good information? Yeah, well, the plan is uh, the plan is to do another Ubercast, uh, obviously with Palmer and hopefully some other people as well. We're we're starting to wrangle up some plans here, so that's going along well. Um, we are going to try as much as physically and digitally as possible, uh, to 
stream everything because we know that not everybody can come out to SVVR, and uh, it's a, it's a damn shame, you know, that everybody can't just snap their fingers and be there. But uh, we're gonna use VR casters as a method with which to bring you into it. So VR casters is just gonna constantly stream as much as their Wi-Fi will let us, and uh, hopefully it's uh, it's a success. So uh, stay tuned. Much yeah, of which, I, much of which I assume can be watched in VR spaces such as this. Uh, yeah, I mean that's you know we're not doing video yet on VR casters, and I stress the yet. But uh, yeah, you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna be able to hear it and uh, bring it with you on the train or on the plane or on the, the car ride back and forth to work and back or school or whatever. You'll be able to listen to it on your mobile devices. VRcasters.com. Plug, plug, plug. Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, you know, being in one of the live events there, and talking all kinds of stuff up, and and uh, <laughs> look forward to doing that again, hearing more. And the whole video thing is something that was. Uh, you know, being able to be on Skype and, and see everybody uh, in our webcams, that was extremely, you know, interesting. And I think everybody wants to see us blather, um, not just hear us, uh, but, but see us in our little rooms and spaces. Totally. And we can stream mm -hmm. it in here and just yeah. have more and more of this goodness. I might have cool to guys. start bathing then. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the downside, Rev. <laughs> yeah, oh well. I work from home, which is now my RV, and bathing is not something that I do as much as probably the rest of you. <laughs> okay, so it's the end of the show. I thank everybody for coming out. Uh, keep coming out every week and support the show. Uh, Guntersuniverse.com is up. You can subscribe to the newsletter there. I'll, I'll send out an email every time there's a show, uh, which happens every Tuesday, uh, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. Um, got a subreddit kicking now, so that's, you know slash r slash Gunter's universe. That's where I'd like to see some of the feedback that you guys have. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know what's good. Let me know what stinks. Uh, post some topics that you'd like to see on the show. People that you might, you know, want me to reach out to, get them on the show. That sort of thing. Um, and definitely follow me on Twitter. Uh, I got sort of a weird Twitter handle because Gunter444 was taken. So it's Gunt3R444. And that's how it is. So find me there, or if you just do a search for Gunter, you'll find me. And thank you to Scott Fletcher, who did the awesome voiceover work that you heard in the beginning of the show. And thanks to Kevin McLeod, who provided the outro music that you're going to hear in just a moment. And thanks to my team that helps me out here. Thanks to the guests, especially all you audience members. Appreciate you coming out. And don't forget, there's a meetup in VR Chat every Sunday evening uh, around 7 p.m. Eastern, sometimes 6 and uh, 3 or 4 o'clock Pacific. So that's it. Um, put a fork in me, as Reverend say. I'm done, <laughs> and uh, it's been a great pleasure being here and hosting again. Check out this cool music. Bye-bye. You want to jump up on the table? That's what I just tried to do, yeah. I couldn't get out of my chair. That's what we used to do. What's the jump button? Can't jump anymore, you gotta spin. Oh my god! Oh my god! Where are the virtual oh! jump <laughs> <laughs>